Hi, today we're going to be looking at a smart digital multimeter. This was sent to me as a free sample from Coeats and we're going to be doing a review. The model number KM601S. In the box we have a case, we have a user manual, Okay, so this is multi-languages, English, German, French, Spanish, Italian. Comes with a three-year warranty. This looks like a very well put together manual. So the first 25 pages is the English version. Manual looks perfect. In the case, nice handy little carry case, keep the multimeter protected. We have the multimeter, we have the leads. This multimeter is rechargeable. So we have a charging cable there, so USB to jack. The leads and a temperature sensor straight away I can see a torch on the back power button there's the jack for plugging in the charger I see the jacks for the leads are now on top of the meter I've seen similar versions to this where the jacks were at the bottom here they were a little bit awkward this looks much better powering on the meter straight into auto mode auto mode is just giving you the options of voltage resistance and continuity with a beep mode that makes sense so here on the auto button we also have left and right by pressing the left we can then scroll through the different options so left and right helps you get to your different options quite easy when we've selected an option for example resistance we do have the jacks lighting up showing where you should plug in your leads so if we go for example from resistance to amps there we go so it shows you where you should plug in your leads if we go to milliamps then we should get these two okay that's quite handy if you're a beginner showing you where to plug in the the leads okay let's just quickly run through all the different options obviously starting with voltage AC DC over to resistance this is for your continuity beep mode you got diodes testing capacitance millivolts AC DC we've got the Hertz with a percentage so we will be able to test frequencies with the duty temperature so you've got options of Celsius Fahrenheit, NCV, that's your live non-contact voltage. So you'll be able to, there will be a sensor on the top. You'll be able to put this against the cable or through a thin wall and you, it will be able to detect whether there is a voltage on that cable. Milliamps, so anything up to 680 milliamps, I believe, you'll be able to use that option. And then of course amps so anything up to 10 amps these two options will be protected with a fuse so if you overload those amps you pop a fuse you'll have an indicator come up on the screen to show you that the fuse is blown and you need to change it connecting up the bench power supply i've got the bench power supply on 12.68 so that is exactly let's just up that a little bit Twelve 
20 volts, 21 volts. Yeah, that's perfect. My parents power supply will go up to 31.42 is what I got maximum and that is right on the button. Let's reduce that. So I've got it on zero point let's see. Zero point zero one is what I've got on my bench power supply. This has got an extra this has got better resolution. So zero point one one. So perfect voltage is definitely a pass okay coming over to ohms let's test some resistors i've got you 220k 100k 1k right down to one ohm Only with a one ohm accurate one K, no problem. Hundred K, no problem. Two twenty K, no problem. Resistance mode sorted, no problem. Next, we have continuity. So that's just our beep mode. Light indicates when we have continuity. Reasonably fast, not the fastest I've seen, but definitely not the worst. That's fine. Next we have diodes. So we're going to be testing the forward voltage on these diodes. Correct. Diodes is working. Next we capacitance. We have a 1000 microfarad capacitor here. And there we go. So that's accurate. It did take one or two seconds, but we do get an accurate reading. No option for ESR. So if you need to test a capacitor, you're covered. Millivolts, my power supply will only go down to about 10 millivolts. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so my power supply doesn't have enough resolution on the meters just showing zero. Okay, well that's the best I can do with my bench power supply. My bench power supply is showing 10 millivolts. The meter is showing about the same. Of course we have a much better resolution on the multimeter. So that will come in handy if you're measuring very low voltages. Next we have frequency and duty cycle. Okay, so my oscilloscope can generate, here we go, so we have 1 kilohertz with 50% duty cycle. And there we 
go straight away quite easily okay so my oscilloscope can only output one megahertz square wave according to the manual the meter should be able to measure up to 10 megahertz unfortunately i do not have a generator that can go that high okay so for frequency and duty cycle everything seems to be working fine okay so for temperature the unit is supplied with this probe we have fahrenheit at the top we have celsius at the bottom okay according to the chart from minus 40 up to a thousand degrees celsius minus 40 fahrenheit up to 1832 fahrenheit okay let's um get some heat on this probe I've got the hot air gun set to 380 yeah so that looks like it's working quite well Okay, so that temperature probe will come in handy when you're soldering, maybe using hot air. Now we're coming down to NC Live, so that's your non-contact live. Will be a sensor on the top here. So we've got this cable here plugged into the mains. If we put the near the sensor, and there we go, we get an indication of H. And a red light showing that there is high voltage running through this cable and if we move a little bit further away the light turns to green we get, get an L okay so this will come in handy to let you know if there's any power running through a cable without having to touch it maybe trace some live wires through a thin wall or something like that next up Williams so when testing ampage, you have to connect in series in the circuit. Okay, let's use this 12 volt fan to test this out. Okay, so there we go. We have just about 10 volts going into the fan. The power supply shows a draw of 140 milliamps and the meter shows the same. So the milliamps seems to be working perfectly. We have some beeping to warn us that we have the cables plugged in on the milliamps there are no that does not give you the option to change any other options because this is plugged in here so if we plug unplug it we can then move to amps and now the amps light lights up okay so let's set the bench sub power supply to 19 volts let's set the amps to three and a half amps or so okay connect the meter and there we go the laptop is charging and on the bench power supply we have a draw of one and a half amps and on the multimeter it is showing exactly the same 1.5 amps charge light is on on the laptop so things like voltages to change from dc to ac simple as pressing the select button and you can then change from dc to ac that will be the same on millivolts dc pressing the select button down to AC min max if you're testing a fluctuating voltage it will then show you the lowest and the highest let's test that out okay connecting up to the bench power supply again min so if we reduce the 
range power supply down to 3 volts and then we increase it. So the bench power supply now is on 17 volts and the meter is now showing 3 volts. So it's measuring a fluctuating voltage. It's showing only the lowest value. If we change it to max and we reduce the voltage, it does not show. And if we go above the 19 volts, it will then start to read. If I go back down, it holds the highest value okay that makes sense hold release so if you're measuring a value and you want to hold on to that value you can press the hold button and that will capture that value and it will not move so let's test that out So we have 6.86, press hold, hold indicator lights up. If I change the voltage now, voltage is up to 15 volts on the bench power supply and the value has maintained its, press REL for release and the meter goes back to normal. Okay, so pressing the select and torch indicator here for two seconds and the little torch on the back lights up two seconds off okay so we've been through all the functions of the coeds km 601s smart digital multimeter okay so the last test i'm going to do is the charging this unit has a 3.7 volt lithium-ion battery let's plug it into a meter So it does indicate battery is at 60% and we do have a power draw of 470 milliamps. So any 5 volt phone charger will be able to charge up this multimeter quite easily. That's the end of my review of this digital multimeter. It ticks all the boxes. And I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it. Thanks to Kawits for sending out this sample unit. Remember there's always a fix. And we'll see you in the next one.